and glory to God Almighty. Glory to God Almighty. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Somebody will in particular be remembered here today. You know, God has a way of remembering us despite his being in charge of our lives. He was the one that told Noah, build an ark, bring all living things into it. And he did it. He was the one bringing down rain. And the Bible still says God remembered Noah. Despite the help of God you have received so far, I'm talking to somebody in particular now. In this service today, God will remember you again. God will remember you again in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank God for the testimonies we have had of this morning, many of them. God keeping people alive over and over again is what appreciation. Diverse touch. All these months, it has been good news. That will be somebody's testimony. All the months ahead, it shall be good news for you. If you are the, the one, let your amen show it. Amen. Whatever it means for you to have good news will happen for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And see how many people God gave children to within a short span. As if they held a meeting before conception. As if they came together and said, okay, let our wives be pregnant so that in so, so weak everything will happen. That is how God works in wonderful ways. You can see that he has made us happy. He has added to us. So you should be looking around to see the hand of God. Glory to his name. Can we celebrate this God again? <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to appreciate everyone in service here this morning. I believe strongly that it is God who brought you in. And it is God you are looking for. You are not here to look at anybody's dress. You are not here to look at the beauty of the environment. You are here as a worshiper of God Almighty. It is him you are looking up unto. And he's showing up for you already. So congratulations, you are welcome. Because God has not given up on you, nothing shall make you give up in life. You know, there are two people who are in charge of your life in the actual sense. God, your maker, and you yourself. You yourself. May you not give up. And I declare it is well with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let us feed on God's word. On knowing yourself for exploit. Knowing yourself for exploit. It is important to know yourself in the pursuit of exploits in life. Making discovery of who you are and maintaining your growth on who you should be in God is your access to having things in life. Who you are is more important than what you have. It is more important to be than to get. The understanding of who you are and the development of yourself is the springboard for what you can become, you can have in life. If you put an opportunity in the hand of somebody who is not developed to keep it, it will be lost. If you give possessions to somebody who is not developed to keep it, it will be lost. 
But if you give a little opportunity to somebody who is developed to, to keep it, who has self-discovery, that thing will multiply. The small will multiply. Who you are is more important than what you have, than what you get. And so the pursuit of self-discovery and self-development is more important than the pursuit of possession. It is not safe to possess when you are not developed to sustain it. May what you have not destroy you. May what you get not destroy you. Hosea chapter 4 verse 7, Hosea 4 verse 7, he said, As they increased, they began to sin against me. And I will, because of that, turn their glory to shame. May that not be your story. You will be strong enough. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, verse 7, and verse 9. He said you should be strong and then of a good courage. So you can share inheritance. It means the availability of the inheritance of the possession is not as important as your being whom you should be. He said, you have to first be strong, and then you first be courageous, then you divide. Your ability to divide possession, which is available for us to take in Christ, is at the mercy of who you are. Look at that verse, verse seven, six. Six says you should be strong and of what? Good courage. Why? For unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which God swore to give to the fathers. So it doesn't matter how certain it is for certain things to come your way. Your self-discovery and development is superior to the availability of those things. Look at verse 7 and verse 9. Only be thou strong. And what again? Very courageous. Very important. Even to observe and do the commandment of God, you need self-discovery. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. With us, wherever thou goest. Now we are laying foundation. May you discover yourself. If you discover you are weak, you discover you are afraid, you discover there are certain things not in order, they can affect your chances. That's why they must be dealt with. On God's own side, He is certain, He will not fail us. But we need self discovery and self preparation, growth, to become whom God wants us to be. I remember some years ago, one of our beloved ones here came around and then he started buying motorcycles. He had about four of them. People were. And then suddenly along the line all those things disappeared. Then he came, we prayed. And I spoke to him on the need for him to work on himself. Then later on, he came back and said, Daddy, I have now discovered why I lost those things. I was not developed enough to handle them. And when he said that, joy filled my heart. God has restored him, giving him many other things far above those things. I pray in the name of Jesus, that you will have self-discovery. Yeah. You will have self-development. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. It takes some time to build up. Even when you have already received Jesus into your life. You need to develop him. Have that understanding. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. You need to build him up in you. He needs to grow in you. Galatians 4 verse 19. My little children, of whom I what? Travail. Until what again? 
in birth again until Christ be formed in you. You can see that there is a dimension of receiving Jesus into your life as your Lord and your personal Savior. And there is the dimension of Christ being formed in you. You have confessed him as your Lord and your personal Savior. But are you laboring for him to be formed in you? It is the formation of Christ in you that makes you become glorious. Because what is available for us to manifest sonship in God is already open. The Bible says that the grace of God for the salvation of all mankind is already available. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. Titus 2 and verse number 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. It is the appropriation of it that is remaining. You labor. You build up. The love of God is already available for us. And the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not even entered into the heart of man what God is having for you and I. Those who love him. But in verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and verse 10. In verse 10, the scripture says clearly that the spirit has revealed it to us. The greatness that is available is revealable. The will of God for us that is available is revealable to us. Ephesians 1 from verse 17, Apostle Paul was praying. He said, I pray that God will open up your eyes of understanding. God will open up your eyes of understanding that you may know. I pray in the name of Jesus you will be discovering more of yourself. You will be growing from one level to the other. God has already finished his works. He has made us sons. He has made us his sons. So we have the benefits, the blessings of sonship. First John chapter 3 verse 1. First John chapter 3 verse 1. We are sons already. We are sons already. We are, he has brought us into that glorious relationship. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. Because it knew him not. We are now sons of God. And you know, when you are a son to a father, especially a father that is God, you know what I mean by that. A son to God Almighty, think of it. Think of it. You can't be a son to a president, even on earth, a governor on earth, and still be like a peanut. There are certain things that can never be a problem. How much more? The almighty God. You are a son to him. All things are already available. All things are made available for us. But we grow into benefiting from them. We grow into understanding them. He loves us so much. The life we live, we now live in Christ. He is our Father. God has opened all doors to us. You will not fail. You will not be frustrated. You will not be disappointed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Say another amen. amen. You do not have to begin this self-discovery with self-condemnation. You are not saved because you are an expert. You are not saved because you are so perfect. You are not saved because your family background is super. You are saved by the grace of God. It is by the grace of God we are saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, verse 6, verse 7 to verse 8, verse 9, is talking about that. Even when we were dead in sins, he had quickened us together with Christ. By grace, grace, ye are what? Ye are saved. Keep going. 
and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his glory in his kindness to us us through Christ Jesus. Next. For by grace I is saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So you are not saved because you are so good. And that is why as soon as you are saved, you have to release yourself to the process of being brought to the point where his blessings can start being released to you. You are growing. Say yes. yes. You are moving from level to level. Yes. You are advancing in life. You are becoming stronger in life. You are becoming better in life. You need to keep checking yourself from time to time. Where am I in my relationship with God? Where am I in my work with God? Remember, after confessing Christ and you start coming to church, that's good. Christ still needs to be formed in you through the steps you take. We saw that in Galatians 4 verse 19. You keep moving from one face to the other. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, it says, Examine yourself, don't you know yourself? Whether ye be in faith, check. God can never lie. He can't save you and promise whatever he will do and fail. Look at it, examine yourselves. Whether ye be in faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except your conscience is dead. Keep finding out where am I in my work with God? Where am I in my relationship with God? Because as you develop, as you build, more doors will open up unto you. Remember, God wouldn't wait for us to be experts before he starts with us. But when he has started with us, he wouldn't want us to remain at the same level. He will be building us up because the more we grow in him, the more we become matured for what he wants to do with us. We are talking of spiritual maturity. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 and 2, he says clearly that even if every blessing of God, you are joined here of salvation with Christ, every blessing of God is available for you. If you are still a baby, you are not growing since you received Christ, he said those blessings will be kept away from you in the hands of tutors and governors until the time of your maturity. God is about to visit somebody with a miracle of encouragement. God will do something very soon in your life that will encourage you to open up the mouth. Yeah. That a man can be stronger. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. So you must be interested in transformation. You must be interested in growth. You must be interested in, improve, in improvement. You have to grow. You have to transform. You have to change. From one level to the other. Labor that Christ may be formed in you. And let me draw your attention to certain areas that will require you bringing the power of salvation to be on them. So you can, you can deal with certain situations and become greater and become stronger and become better. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's life will improve more than where you are now. The amen is weak. You see, all things are already done. Everything is already in place. But God is building us as his sons. Every one of us is building us up as sons and daughters. And as he's building us up, he's entrusting us with diverse treasures of the kingdom. Diverse treasures of the kingdom. Is releasing them to us. But he wouldn't want what he will do with you to be destroyed, to be wasted. Neither will he want what he will do with you to destroy you. He's interested in building you up. It is not enough to receive Christ 
But after you have received Christ, every door of the kingdom is already available for you. Nevertheless, you need to keep building up and building up and building up, moving from one face to the other. Look at this concerning self-development, transformation in God for exploits. Number one, if you know you are from a sinful background, sinful background, then you will need to work on yourself after you receive Christ. God does not condemn a sinner, but he does not want sin. So as you receive him, if you know the life you have been living before is a sinful life, work on yourself. It is not one man. Eh, all have sinned. All. So it's not a thing of pointing an accusing finger to somebody else. All have sinned. Remember Romans chapter 3 verse 23. All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. But the door of salvation is now open to all. So when you come into Christ, you crucify sin. You flush out sin. So you can grow and become an instrument that can carry power. Remember, the price you pay to carry power is purity. You clean up. You can't be forging ahead with sin and expect everything to happen. You are there. You are a son already. All the doors are open unto you already. Available. But you have the necessity of mortifying the deeds of the flesh. You have the necessity of not allowing the instruments of your body, the parts of your body to become instruments of sin anymore. You crucify. Now, we are all coming from somewhere, but if you watch out, you see those who are actually ready to do exploit in the kingdom. We are all saved from sin, but don't continue with it. Deal with it and put it behind. We are saved that we may serve him in holiness and in righteousness. Luke chapter 1, verse 74 and 75. Sincerely, if you look at some people clearly, you will know some of the things that needs to be dealt with. If you have given your life to Christ, one assignment before you is that you deal with sin. Because who you are is superior to what you want to have. When you become the person God is working on, then doors are open unto you for the intention that God is having for you. You need to be sincere with yourself. Since you gave your life to Christ, have you been dealing with sins? King David said something in Psalm 25 and verse 7. He said, oh God, please do not remember the sins of my youth. When I was young and I was coming up, I messed up, but please help me put them behind. Because I'm going for higher grounds. Remember not the sins of my youth. Nor my transgressions. According to thy message. Remember thou me. For thy goodness sake. O oh Lord. For the sake of your goodness. Let's be sincere to ourselves. You have received Christ. That's all. You are a candidate of salvation. Yes. The promises of God are valuable. Yes. One thing you need to fight with. And put it behind. Is sin. And remember, every sin is sin. We don't need to mention their names. So that somebody will not say, he didn't mention the other one that I used to do. Sin is sin. Every sin is what? Number two, if you are from a poor background, you are from a poor background, you need to wake up. God does not reject people that are from a poor background. Instead, in salvation, he turns around their fortune. I remember what Gideon said in Judges chapter 6. Judges 6, verse 15 and verse 16. Judges chapter 6, verse 15 and verse 16. Now, there's a clear understanding there. Very clear understanding there. An opportunity came. God sent an angel to tell Gideon that he was a mighty man. 
and that God was going to use him to deliver the children of Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Well, look at what he is saying about himself. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and the story will change. <laughs> Paraphrased. Amen. You can be saved, you can be raised from a poor background. This man said, I am from a poor family. And in that family, I'm the least. And God said, that doesn't matter. Somebody listening to me, your background will not stop you. Your background will not limit you. But it's important for you to find out now that I'm in Christ, what must I do to break poverty off my life? What are the instructions given by God through which poverty can give way? You don't wish yourself into change. You walk yourself into change. Faith without work is dead, the scripture says. James chapter 2. James chapter number 2. Verse 17. Verse 26. You have them there. Faith without work is dead. I am from a family where resources has always not been too easy. I know my father's side. I know my... Yes. Now that you are in Christ, you can have a new testimony. You can have a new life. But what must I do to have that breakthrough away from poverty? How can you be trying to be better? You know you are from a poor family and you don't give. You don't pay tight. You don't help anybody. You don't labor hard because there is room for labor. How can you be from a poor family and then you are looking for the prayer house where they will just pray for you and their money will just fill everywhere? That's, that is deception. Anybody who prophesied that for you is faking it. Yes, once in a while a miracle may drop to encourage you. God may do something you didn't have, ever expect. So you can wake up. But don't forget, even inside every giving, every receiving that comes your way, you have your seed. You have both meat, meat or bread, and you also have seed. Seed to sow, so that next time you will harvest. If you are from a family that has not been having enough, you are not condemned. And you must make sure that you don't continue that way. Don't make it the lifestyle of everybody in the family. Wake up to break it. Break it off. You labor with interest. I mean to say be interested in laboring. Make discoveries of what to do. Find out the steps you must take to break off the poverty. If you know you are fighting poverty, why will you not be a giver? Those who give, it is generally said, don't lack. You get involved, you get engaged. Now, there's a dimension of greatness of wealth we have not got it yet but we are going there the assurance is there because god has opened our eyes to the steps to take and he's a faithful god he will not fail how can i have anything and not pay tight god forbid i know the battle i'm fighting i'm using my obedience as arrows against poverty and lack break it off they don't have to beg you to give offering and you don't have to have the mentality of coming to church. There you look for five naira, I look for ten naira. You want to do change? And then, then you touch one thousand and say, "Well, God forbid." I know they give that kind of thing. I go. You don't. You don't do that. A great man of God says something. Keeping what is not enough does not increase it. It doesn't increase it. It is so in it that increases it. So take note of this. You have to travel, labor for Christ to be formed in you, for the kingdom of God to show up in you. Labor for it. We have pass to play. All things are given to us freely, but remember that freedom is not free. He says anyone that does what he says will be his disciple indeed. Don't look for any game. Don't look for any prophet or prophetess somewhere that will say, ah, when I pray for you, the poverty in your family don't go catch for you again. Yes, that is one leg. 
You have to go and labor. Apostle Paul said, anybody who does not labor, let his mouth not eat. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. Wake up and labor. Wake up to it. Forget about storytelling. Forget about pointing accusing fingers. All those you who are, you are saying they don't give me, they don't give They are laboring to get. So who are you accusing? Did you hear that uh, heaven opened and the money fell into somebody's house? When you develop the attitude of labor to break poverty, you will remember others. I mean to say that you will not be pointing accusing finger to anybody that they didn't help you. Because God will... Rebo- he says, my elect will never labor in vain. Yes, yes, yes. Isaiah 65 and verse 23. Yes. Isaiah 65 verse 23. In the name of Jesus, you will never labor in vain again. Yes. Look at it. They shall not labor in vain. And they will not bring forth for trouble. They are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. And they are free. You will not labor in vain. You will not labor in vain. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are breaking off from poverty. The poverty story of your family lineage will not be your portion again. It shall not be your portion again. The grip is loosed. Because of Jesus, the grip is loosed. It is loosed of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's see how many we can take. Then we stop and continue within the period. Number three area you must discover yourself and work on it is fetish an evil covenant background. If you are from a family that have worshipped altars that have served other gods. You are from a family that have done some demonic things and all. And then you are saved because you have confessed Christ. You sit down there. The devil is not a gentleman. And for your information, he will never repent. So that you have now received Christ does not kill him. Doesn't kill the devil. Doesn't change his mind. You must take the weapons in the kingdom of God for the wealth. Warfare of your destiny. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this world and wickedness in high places. You must bring yourself to a point where you execute judgment against wickedness. Second Corinthians chapter 10. And in, from verse 3. And in verse 6 in particular, it says, when your obedience in, is fulfilled, verse 6, you will deal with the evil forces. And having in a readiness to revenge your disobedience. When your own obedience is fulfilled, when you begin to take the right steps, then you contend with them. And James chapter 4, verse 7, James 4, verse 7, the Bible says, submit yourself to God, which is where many people are hanging. Submit yourself, therefore, to God, comma, can somebody say yes? But after you have submitted yourself to God, use the authority of sonship to do what? Resist the devil. He's not a gentleman. Tell him to pack up. And what will happen? Then he will flee. In Romans chapter 6 verse 16, Romans 6 verse 16, we have an authority there. He said, whosoever you submit yourself to, to obey, you become a servant to that person. Why not tell the devil, I'm not obeying you, I'm not your servant again? You think it's a joke for your family background to have raised an alt- some altars in the past? To have entered into covenant? The devil wants to retain those covenant, those altars eternally until he takes that person, not you, to hellfire with him. So you have to break it. That covenant must be broken. Those altars must be dislodged from your life. In John chapter 9, the man that was born blind when the, the, the Pharisees and the rest started contending and all of that, they asked the parents, who is the person that healed your child? And is he not a sinner? Eh? Eh, who is he? The pe-? They say, excuse us, sir. We know our child was born blind. And we know now he has a miracle his eyes can see. 
But if you want to find out anything, he is of age, you go and ask him. At the point you are, the covenant your parents entered with any altar should not rule you. You are of age, you have to speak for yourself. You are of age, you have to speak for yourself. You are of age, you have to speak for yourself. Ezekiel chapter 18, from verse 1, God says, what is the proverb I'm hearing concerning my children? He said, I'm hearing that fathers eat so grape and the teeth of the children are set at edge. He said, that proverb will not continue. He says, the soul of the father, so is the soul of the son. Judgment will only come on the soul that commits sin, not on everybody. But if you don't know it, you are locked up. But if you know it, you wake up and say, the covenants of my fathers will not rule me. The altars of my fathers will not rule me. I am free. It's enough for today, let's rise. I am free. I am free. I am free. I will not be ruled by the altars of evil that my fathers, my forefathers, my grandfathers, my parents entered into. I am free. I've entered into a new covenant with the Lord God Almighty, the Lord God Almighty. through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Therefore, every influence, every, every control, every control over, my life, over my life that is negative, that is negative, be disconnected, be disconnected, be disconnected, be disconnected, be disconnected, are you praying at all? I said no to the influence and control of contrary covenant. I said no to the influence and in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, we must not take our journey of salvation for granted. They have been messing up members of your family. You've been killing them, frustrating them, forcing them to come and serve evil altars. And then some of them that have submitted themselves to those altars are doing wickedness against members of the family. Wherever you travel to whatever school you go, they want you to bow to them. And you are cool. You are quiet. You must wake up to it. And for your information, you don't need to carry charm to be influenced by them. Let me th thank God for what salvation does. He's in charge of all things. But can I ask you a question? Do you know what they did with your forefathers? Do you know the covenant they entered into? Even when you were born, did you know what they did? In the world that we are into, when people give you water to drink, only God knows the content. Yes. 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 The Bible says affliction does not come out of the dust. Trouble does not germinate from the ground. They are coming from somewhere. Job chapter 5 and verse 6. Job 5 verse 6. In verse 7, he said, yeah, the ways of man are filled with troubles. But in verse 8, he gave the answer. He said, I will look upon to God. I will seek God. I will seek God. I will seek God. I will seek God. All the issues will commit into his hands. In the name of Jesus, every challenge that is coming from the background you are coming from, either by your father's lineage or your mother's lineage or your own personal errors in going to altars and covenants that are negative the power of god break them off your life the power of god break them off your life the power of god break them off your life it might also interest you to know that you know in john chapter 1 verse 12 the bible said to them that receive jesus 
He has given power to become the sons of God. So it takes power to become son. Otherwise, you remain a babe. He didn't say power to be a child. Power to be a son. Power to be a son. He has given. And the devil also wants to exercise power. So you must use the power of God to counteract his own power. Say amen. amen. Do you know sin also has power? Some people don't like what they are doing. They cannot be free from it. Romans chapter 6, verse 12, 13, and 14. It says, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Sin. The power of sin will not rule over you again. Amen. Sin has power. Somebody came to me, and by word of knowledge, I started telling him about his life. He said, man of God, it is true. If I have any money at all, the next place that will come to my mind is Biapala. And he said, by the time I take a cup, I will be as drunk as somebody who has taken a carton. I will misbehave. I will cry. But when next another money comes, I'm on my way there. See, that's power. But that power is broken in Christ. Amen. Lift up your hand. Every grip of sin over you, in the name of Jesus, I command a broken of him. I command a broken of you. I command a broken of you. Look at Romans chapter 6. Romans 6, from verse 12. Romans 6, from verse number 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the law. So don't obey sin again. The power of sin is loose from you. Verse 13 and 14. Let's run through it quickly. 13 and 14. Neither yield ye the parts of your body, members of your body, your eye, your mouth, your hand, your leg, your private part, rather than all of that. Don't yield them as instrument of what? Unrighteousness unto sin again. But yield yourselves unto God as what? As those that are alive from the dead. And your members, parts of your body, as instruments of what? Righteousness unto God. Why? Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you again. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Any sin you commit now, if you are in Christ genuinely, now you allow them. Now you agree. The power of sin is there, but you have received a greater power. The power you have received is your nay is nay. Your, you remember what I told you some years ago? Ago, The ability to say no when necessary is spiritual maturity. If you must agree with everything, you never mature. You know it's not godly. You know it's not good. You agree. Some of you say, because uh, you know I respect him. Because I love him. Because he will help me. Some people give out their bodies because of cream. Cream. Not because of money. You don't need all that again. You know you are coming from somewhere and you are to become a glorious child of God. Take the journey up yourself and see things happen in your favor. They will happen in your favor. Yeah. They will happen in your favor. Yeah. In a few seconds, every authority power of sin over me be broken. Declare it. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. There is power in your mouth. God will back up what you say. 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 will back up what you say. God 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 will back up what Sin, you will no longer have dominion over me. The power of sin over me be broken off. The power of sin over me be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's happening for somebody already. Say a good amen. You are also going to pray. The grip of poverty over me must be loosed. 
I refuse to surrender to poverty background. I refuse to surrender to the power of poverty. Remember also that to be wealthy, to be rich, to be blessed requires power. Which means poverty also has power. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. He said, I will give you power to get wealth. I will give you power to get wealth. It takes power to get wealth. It takes power to get wealth. It is he that gives the power to get wealth. Every power of poverty over your life must be destroyed. And the power to get wealth must become your portion. Say amen. Begin to pray that prayer. Every power of poverty. Every power of poverty over my life. Over my life. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Every power of poverty. Over my life. Be destroyed. Every power of poverty. Over my life. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. take your house for accommodation again your life will not be the accommodation for poverty now take note of this when you discover laziness is stepping it stepping in it is the power of poverty laziness laziness you feel lazy about anything do small you say hey, i know it i never want to suffer like that and a young man came to you have heard this before came around and said man of oh god i need help i don't have anybody to help me and where did you school up to is it secondary school i said good what we'll do is uh, anywhere any of our church members will be building house, you go there and support in labor and all, they'll be paying you until your change comes. He said, no, I know if you do that one, no. I said, you are not ready. You are not ready. Now, everybody has level. But the Bible says, a little sleep, a little slumber, so will your poverty come. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 10. Proverbs 6 verse 10. Don't be a lazy person. You must be hard working. Look at it. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, then what happens? What happens next? So shall thy poverty come. <laughs> so when you sleep one too much, you know it's the power of poverty that is holding you. As one that traveled, and thy want as an armed man. Avoid it. Stinginess is power of poverty. Because you can't reap what you don't sow. If you give, it shall be given unto you. To give people anything. Hard. That's the power of poverty holding you. You look civilized. You look better to give. <laughs> you wise in that one. It's not the wisdom of God. It's the wisdom of the prince of this world. Which is the devil. That wouldn't want you to give. Pay tight. He said, God forbid. Now, you, did, you have not studied other parts of the Bible, but that one you say, tight is the, is the law. The law of Moses. That's why you <laughs> Tight was in existence before Moses came. Genesis chapter 14, verse 18 to 20. In those days, Abraham, our father in faith, paid tight. And you know his life. He never lacked. 
never lacked. So it's not law. Forget about those who are confusing people. Tithe is your instrument for breakthrough. Malachi chapter 3. From verse 8 to verse 11. He said, you have robbed me in tithe and in, rob in, in uh, offering. Will a man rob God? Yet, all of that. And he said, you are cursed with a curse because you have robbed me. A curse means something happening abnormally. And then in verse 10, he said, bring here all the tithe into my storehouse and prove me now here with. If I will not open the window of heaven and pour you down a blessing and there will not be room enough to receive it. And then in verse 11, he said, then I will rebuke the devourers for your sake. Those things that used to destroy your things, I will rebuke them. And then he said, your vine will not cast their young in the field before their time. You will start a thing and it will get aborted on the way. If you are faithful. God is talking like this and somebody wants to confuse you. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, the problem with the Pharisees is that they pay tithe of everything, but they don't obey God in any other area. So he said, you pay tithe and also obey God in other areas. Matthew 23 and verse 23. So you must make sure you are committed to what can change your story. Be committed to what can change your story. Start from somewhere. And don't be deceived to be waiting for a big job. Start from whatever comes your way. There is room for growth. You are waiting for work from NMPC and from CBN and from a government house. The little you can, start with it first. And even if you are a civil servant and you know that 3 p.m., 4 p.m. you have closed, look for something small you can add. Something small. Look for something small. Start by buying some few day old chick. If you if you give them feed small, if you more money does not in your compound, look for a way of allowing them to get to, to manifest on what is on the ground. You already know what I mean. Gradually, you have chicken to sell. You have goats to sell. I went to the house of one of our leaders here. I saw goat everywhere. I said, This is good, goat everywhere. And then their fence. You don't have to sit back and expect riches and wealth to come. You need to know what to do. Don't allow the power of poverty to hold you down. This issue of accusing uncles and brothers and sisters is laziness. They give you food to eat. You say it's not enough. Where is your own? Now, if you are a small child of three years, five years, you are with your parents, it's understandable. But you are of age already. You they measure food and you are bringing in nothing. That is the deception of poverty. You are living that level. You will do exploit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say another amen. amen. Say a loud amen. amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Don't forget, these things will only work for those who have Christ. You don't have Christ, you are far from it. Christ has not come into your life, you are far from it. You have not asked God to forgive you your sins and to give you a new life, you are far from it. You need to consciously ask him to forgive you your sins and give you a new life to live. Let your name be written in the book of life. Let heaven open on you. You will not be disappointed. That is where the journey begins from. Because the past where you are coming from, there is a Lord over those who are there. Those who are in bondage in this area, in that area, some forces are lording over them. And as long as you keep quiet, those forces will be on you. So you need to consciously say, any power that has been ruling my life, my family lineage before, I divorce you. I now give my life to Jesus. And it is done. Shall we close our eyes? Can you talk to God? I need everyone, get up. Everybody get up. Lord, I need a new life. I divorce every power that has ruled my life before now, my family lineage, I divorce you. I break away from you. You can't force me to serve you. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I reject you. I am of age. Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. His blood is the blood of my covenant with God Almighty. I am free from contrary forces. Jesus is my Lord. Say a loud amen. Say another amen. Say a good amen. amen.